everyone, Sean Frangella here with part four of our in-depth look at working with Adobe Fuse to build custom 3D characters. Now, if you're just jumping in now, this is the fourth video where we're gonna talk about really editing our materials that we've dropped onto this clothing for our character. And if you wanna back up and check out how we got here, be sure to check out the first couple of videos where we get really in depth about assembling our character from scratch, customizing our character's geometry, and adding clothing with these pre-built options that come with the program. So if you're up to speed, what we're gonna do now is jump into this texture tab, and this lets us really edit and customize all the little details of these clothing presets that we've added to our character. So in this tab, if we click on any of our pieces of clothing, say our vest or our gloves, it's gonna open up the parameters for those objects as well as all of the different material elements that it's built from. So in the case of these gloves, we can see that there's general parameters. So what we might wanna do first is just take the texture resolution up from 512 to 1024, and that's gonna update that and give us twice as good images. And then at the bottom, we can see there's different tabs for each material that this is built out of. So in the case of the gloves, there's synthetic leather, the denim, the fabric, and even what that strap looks like. And it's the same thing for every object. So if we grabbed our vest, we could see there's the same texture resolution and basic settings and all of those elements that it's made up of. So let's take a look at this vest as an example. What we can do with all of these things is edit things like our overall roughness of the material, as well as settings like edge wear and dirt wear. You can see there's a little bit of grit added to this and we can edit that for each setting and you can see it auto fills this with what this piece of material is made of. So in this case, we can edit the wear on the shirt, the bag, the elbow pads and everything separately and even change the color of that. If we click this color picker, maybe we want there to be pink dirt and we can see where that's being added. And then we could go back and click that color and maybe make it something a little more normal. And we can even see the live updates in our color picker before we pick OK. We can add custom colors if we wanted by picking a color and clicking add to custom colors. Maybe if we want to try some different options. So you can do a lot in our color picker and just our basic settings. Now, this is made up of a bunch of different parts, of course. So we have things like our vest, our elbow pads, and all of the parts it's made of. And this is where things get really crazy with how much you can edit. Because let's say we go to our shirt. For our shirt, we can change what this material is made of. So again, we could change our color. Maybe we want it to be more of a maroonish shirt. We can see how that's updating. And I'll just make this more of like a bluish color because that was fine to kind of see what we're working on. And then with each of these textures, we can adjust those individually. So we could, if we punch in here, take the scale of the pattern more or less so we can see the bigger or smaller we make that. We can really see more details in the pattern, things like creases and our ambient occlusion intensity. But what's really cool about this is this is just one option for a material for a shirt. Whenever we're editing any of these materials, we can take a look down here and there's different libraries of materials for different types of materials. So we have things like synthetic patterns, which is a lot of shirt materials, metal, solid colors, fabric, and leather. So if we want to get a completely different shirt, we could grab any of these. Let's click that. And we can see this is a totally different shirt that's pretty funny. A little dress shirt underneath this SWAT team vest. And if we grab any of these, it's going to replace that material with our custom settings available for whatever that one is. So we can still have a vest and a shirt, but totally change the material of each item individually. So if we take a look at this one as an example, this is built up of four different colors. So we could change each of those colors separately. And same thing goes for any of these. If we grab this one, we can see it has completely different settings. So we could take a look at all of these different options. Maybe we want a shirt made of metal. 
or leather, and we can really customize this. So you can see how much this opens up the customization for this because we could grab any of these, say the vest, and maybe we want the vest to be one of these metal materials. We could click and it's gonna add that to our vest. And we can easily just swap those out and get completely different looks and then customize those further. Now, one thing you might wanna do is edit the actual image map that's being used to create this. And as far as I understand right now in the software, there isn't any right click or menu to edit that. If we wanted to change this or put a logo on it, but those files do exist somewhere. Say for example, the SWAT image is part of a material. If we wanted to find where those are and edit those, you can find those. If we just jump into Finder, we can find those materials if we go to Applications, Adobe Fuse, and it would be somewhere similar if you're on a PC. And here's our Adobe Fuse app, but if we right click, we can go to Show Package Contents, and this will open up Contents, and this is everything that the program is running on. So if you wanna find those materials that are in the folder Data, Domains, Mixamo, Cloths, and here we can see there's folders for every pre-built clothing. So it's available, but kind of buried in there. It took me a little bit to really find where those are. But as an example, if we wanted to edit this SWAT image, we know that this is this tactical response preset. So there's a folder for that. If we look at top mail fit a tactical response in this folder, there's our images that this is built from. So there's our ambient occlusion pass, the detail, the masks, and that normal map and occlusion mask. So these do exist if you wanted to really take a look and see what this is being built from. If we wanted to edit these, we could open it up in Photoshop. So let's open this. And then we could change the color of this. So let's select this and say we want it to be red just so we can see the difference. We could click OK and fill that with red, and then save. Now you might get a permissions issue where it says it can't save. If that happens, you need to do another step on any of these images. Let's say we were getting that issue. We'd wanna press Command I for get info and make sure this is changed to read and write. As an example, if it's on this read only for everything, let's close that out and reopen it. If we had tried to make a change and save now, we'll get this message. So if you're getting this, what you'll wanna do is go back into Finder, make sure under Get Info, you change each of it to read and write. You might need to input your admin password. So it is a little technical if you wanna access these right now as it's built, but you can do it and they are there. So let's update that, save it. And now if we go back into Fuse and just shut down Fuse, so we'll do Quit, Save, and then reopen the program. It's going to run that check when we open up our model. So let's go to File, Open Recent. There's that file it's working from. It's gonna rebuild that, relink everything. As we can see here, it's updating that and it has changed that. So it is possible to edit those. You just need to do a little digging as it happens right now. So one last thing, even though this is indented and says SWAT, if we really wanted to customize this, let's say, Next to our SWAT image, I'm gonna put this logo from Adobe Illustrator that I made of my initials. So let's just make this white and I'll copy this and go into Photoshop and then I'm gonna paste it into here. I'll paste as a smart object, rotate it around and put it next to our SWAT image. And I'm just gonna make a copy of that with Command J and move this one down. And then I'm just gonna combine these layers with Command E and I'll save this again and do the same thing of just shut down fuse, reopen that and reload that character. If we orbit around, you can see it is dropping those in on there. So it is possible to add little logos and images and completely edit the maps. If you really want to, you just need to do a little bit of digging. And now if you want to actually use these characters in 3D animation or Photoshop, what you can do is save them to your CC libraries or save to Mixamo if you want to add it to their web app. And that's gonna let you send it to your other Adobe apps 
or get the 3D model completely separately and bring it into something like Cinema 4D or Maya. If you want to learn about those workflows, be sure to check out the other videos I have up about doing that, where you can learn to either take our 3D model and bring it into Photoshop's 3D system, add some mocap data, or save it to Mixamo's web app where you could then very easily bring it into a 3D program like Cinema 4D and use it as a full 3D asset with pre-built rigging. So be sure to check those out if you wanna to continue to learn about views and see what you could actually do with these after you customize and build it because it makes it really easy and lets you do a lot of cool creative stuff without getting bogged down in the rigging and the technical parts. As always, thanks for watching. If you wanna get more weekly tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you wanna help out the show, and keep the show going. You can lend your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella where you can get bonus content, project files, and all sorts of cool stuff. And if you have any questions or requests for tutorials, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot in this Adobe Fuse in-depth walkthrough, and I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.